Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. You know, things happen in our lives that um, if we don't fill our hearts with gratitude, they could do some serious uh, damage to our lives. Um, this next person, I call her my bump in the road coach because whenever I hit a bump in the road, uh, I get a hold of Robin and she always comes up with some words of wisdom to help me through the time. Um, when a close friend died, uh, actually when more like five uh, close friends died for me and my wife, um, did um, Robin, she had, she had some kind words for us and it helped us put things into perspective. Um, recently, uh, Robin had her own little bump in the road where she had an accident while hiking. She got run over by a dog <laughs> and um, broke her arm and a couple um, and bruised, bruised herself up pretty good. Uh, along with that, she also had um, had to have some uh, retina surgery done because something was detaching in her retina. And she had really quite the 2020, but if you listen closely to uh, Ro Robin Wyman talk about her story, you hear a lot of gratitude and why she believes she should be grateful for everything that happens. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we're here um, as part of, of the Gratitude Series um, with Robin Wyman. And Robin, I've always, um, I've always kind of uh, nicknamed Robin as my um, bump in the road coach. Whenever there was a bump in the road, it's like Robin is the lady to call. She, she, she just knows how to. How to get you through just about anything. If it's grief. If it's. Um, just about. It, she has so many different modalities to her. Um, that she can help you. Meditate and find your way. Um, back to you. Back to the path that you were supposed to be on. And back to your purpose. So welcome to the show Robin. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me today. It's a it's a pleasure to be able to share share the topic of gratitude with you. It made yeah. me laugh because um, can I just share something really quick? My daughter phoned me the other day, and she was quite wound up, and um, she was telling me she she had got it was about a computer. She had got a re a computer reconfigured. And it wasn't working. So she was going to go to London Drugs and buy a new computer, although that was a little out of her price range. So I just, I sort of talked her down and calmed her down <laughs> and then said, you've got to go back to the guy and tell him that what you need. And I helped her work through how she was going to talk to him. And then um, the next day she said, thanks, Mom, for take, talking me down off the ledge of my, my mood. And uh, that's a good description for me, Michael, because I really do help people come back down, ground, and just go, oh, okay, take a breath, let's just, let's look at this from a bigger perspective, so thank you, that made me think of that situation with her, <laughs> funny. It, it, that's, that's a good story, and, and there's just so many people that have stories like that with you, where you just kind of talked them back away from the edge, and they were going to jump off and, and, and dive in the deep end and they didn't need to. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. I do that a lot. I said, 
you be sort of some 15 minute call, just phone Robin and um, sort of bring you back to that centered calm place and then you can go out your day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, one of one of my uh, most favorite things that, that I've ever done with you was um, was a sensory um, meditation, and mm-hmm. uh, the, the, at, at, at the end at the end of this story, everybody, uh, she winds up rescuing me because I have like this oversensitive nose thing going on, and she has to like jump back into the meditation and yank me back to reality but <laughs> but but it was one of the most uh, fantastic experiences I ever had because it was such a vivid med- meditation that um, that you used uh, essential oils and you were involved every sense that you can think of it to to guide people through a meditation to, of relaxation and everything, and um, I never told you that that told you this, but that particular um, week was was really stressful um, because partners were trying to figure out where where we were going to go to next, and. Um, at the end of at the end of all that, when uh, when we had invited you to to our studio that time um, to do this meditation, that we weren't sure where we were going with everything, and there was clarity at the end of that. Mm-hmm. Even though you, <laughs> you you had to jump back in uh, away from the rest of the group to to get me back into into the group again, but there was a lot of clarity. Um, around what we what what we were going to do next with our business, so yeah, so that's beautiful because I so often find we spend a lot of time up in our minds and we're just we you know COVID's changed a lot of things and helped people calm 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 down and quiet. However, we do tend to go into our minds and then a lot of times we jump out of our bodies. And so a lot of times people are not grounded in their bodies. And my a big um, part of my work that I do with people is to help them get into the body and know it's safe to be in the body. And one of the beautiful ways is using essential oils. I love oils. And so it's really this sensory experience for me because our body has so much wisdom. You, Michael, you, um, you are embodied, but you, the oils, I, think, I don't even remember what the blend that I used that day was, but it took you off. So it can take people quite out because they, they really can expand or expand your mind. And you obviously went way out. But I'm good at bringing people back down yeah. too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I, but it's, when we calm and go into our hearts and just start breathing deeply and we move more into the body, then clarity can often come. And that's what happened for you. So that's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I should have, I should have, the, the next time, re- remember that I, as a, as a kid, um, I used to, um, when I had, whenever I had like growing pains or something like that, I would soar. So I, um, like just step outside of my body, soar away, and then <laughs> come back after the pain was gone. <laughs> so I, I, should, I probably should have told you something like that before. <laughs> That's okay. Things Same with me because um, public speaking was not where I was comfortable at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm gen- as I'm getting older, I'm feeling more and more comfortable about sharing and speaking and, and speaking in front of groups And because um, I know that's part of my life purpose. It's not, why have all this information and gathered all this knowledge and not share it, right? Yeah. But to get, I had to get over that. But I used to get in front of even a camera and I could, I just feel myself and I just pop out because it didn't feel safe to be in the body. So I go, but it took me a long time to realize, oh, you're out. Come on back in. It's safe to be here. It's safe to yeah. share. So it's, it happens to all of us all the time. 
when yeah. we get in stressful situations or we're up in that mind just processing and looping why, about our, some issue that we we're trying to figure through figure our way through but when we go in the body we can just calm down and then we start to we go into the heart and we're led by the heart and quietly through the mind and that's where the magic happens that's yeah. magical yeah then perfect in, again we, we did um at the end of all that process we all found found clarity in what we were supposed to be doing and um as as a group we we all still work together and um we but what we're doing uh we're doing slightly different things but we're doing them bigger you know what i mean does that make sense interesting um, and a lot of that was was because of your help with us that that particular day. So yeah. oh, thank you. Yeah, that's that's very lovely. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> thank you. That's very so, kind. Yeah. One, one one of the reasons why I'm grateful to, just to have you as as my friend. So um, mm, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I guess let's we're let's uh, start again here. Uh, what what are some of the things that um, through twenty twenty that you are actually grateful that did happen? Because there's always something to be grateful for, no matter what happens to us, right? Well, twenty twenty has been. It's been life changing for everyone. I, I mean, it's it. We're not going back to. People keep saying, "When are we going to go back to the way it was, the way the normal, the way it was?" And I went, "That's we're not going back to that again." And that's just my opinion. But we're in another um, form of energy now. It we're being taken in a different direction. And I had a couple of really ex- interesting experiences through twenty twenty. So. I, I would like to share share a couple because Michael and you and I chatted about this. Was at on I'll never forget the date. It was March 26, so it was just as COVID. We, we were beginning to um, hear about the lockdowns, and it was just beginning. And I was walking. I live on the um, in North Vancouver, which is um, against the mountains in the city of Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And I love to walk through the forests. And I was on a walk. And I was with my daughter and her dog, and we were walking through the woods, and and we're just having a beautiful walk, and then out of the blue, a big dog runs into the back of me, and I go flying through the air. And I end up, um, I had already hurt my knee so uh, years before, so I re-injured my knee, I flipped in the air, hurt my shoulder, and both broke both bones in my left wrist. So it was all on my left side of my body. So I remember, and every there were people there, but nobody wanted to come up and touch me because people were scared of COVID. Don't go near anybody because it was just beginning. Right. So honestly, my daughter was there, and I honestly don't know. I knew something was wrong right away. I mean, you can tell when you've hurt yourself. So, But I was able to get up. I honestly don't know how we walked out of the forest because we had probably, we probably took us 45 minutes to an hour to get out from where we were. And um, lots of stopping, lots of crying, lots of screaming. Lots of <laughs> there was a lot of emotional things going on for me. And then she took me to the hospital and... I didn't want to go into the hospital because I was nervous. Nobody understood really what COVID was at all then. And um, she was not allowed to come in with me, but um, they were so kind. And I was in the hospital for about four hours. And during that time, I had three different sets of x-rays taken. They had to sedate me because it was a bad break. It was both bones in my wrist. So they had to sedate me and... um, align my bones together again and um, more x-rays and I'll tell you I was in and out of the hospital within four hours which is pretty unheard of today but it was just amazing and I remember chatting with the doctors I had two doctors that were helping me they were young women and their names Melissa and my daughter's name's Melissa so I'm always 
very I'm paying attention to the signs and and what and what the universe is bringing and talking to how it's talking to me specifically. Mm-hmm. So I was very grateful to have these beautiful Melissa's taking care of me, and um, we were talking, and I could feel that I was going into shock, and I was a very emotional. Um, and then I. I say go into your breathing you know what to do you know how to calm yourself down so I would just start my breathing and we were just talking and they said and we were and I was chatting with them and they and they were saying we are so stressed we don't really know what's happening and I mean they had the masks on and then they had the face guards and then they had their their um their ha- like the little caps that they wear on so they said we don't even recognize who each other is at the time anyway and we were kind of laughing about that but they said we're so stressed that we'll just go in a room and we may have to cry for a few minutes just to release the tension and they kept saying to me if you need to cry just cry so there was quite a bit of tears from all of us in that in that um emergency room with me but i've got to say that was i was so grateful for the way i was treated i was so grateful that i was canadian and I was so grateful that I could go into the hospital and within four hours be coming out again and be, I had a cast and I had a cane because I couldn't really walk very well. So it was, it was sort of a gong show. But I just kind of went, it felt very humbled by that experience. And then yeah. as the weeks came on, my daughter was with me, so she came and stayed with me my other daughter came over from she lives in victoria came over from the island and she supported me and i my son supported me too but the the three kids were amazing because i couldn't do anything i couldn't take a shirt off i couldn't undo my bra i i was really like a little baby and i just ached and ached but i was so grateful and so grateful for all these people that came to me in my life in when I really, really needed help. It was yeah. very, very um, life-transforming for me. It wasn't that I was so involved in the COVID and all that because I had to deal with the injuries that I had because, you know, I, that, that really took me out. But uh, the, the way I was supported and helped, it was very, very humbling. And I felt very vulnerable in that experience. I would just start to feel so grateful for things. I'm feeling that emotional now, and I'm feeling it's, it makes tears come to my eyes. But just just how kind and caring everyone was for me. Yeah. So there's, that's one of my COVID experiences for this year. And then about a month ago, I had a very weird thing happen to my eye, and it felt like ink got in my left eye and so all left side of the body everyone so that's all about the feminine and receiving and allowing things to come into your life and um, I felt like after this this um, this sort of ink I felt like ink got shot in my eye and then there were these sort of bales of little black dots all in front of my eyes a left eye so I did my vision was really a um, obstructed so it was like maybe four or five of them it was like veil on veil on veil that's the only way I know how to do really describe that yeah so I'm about I'm a holistic healer so I was doing my meditation I waited probably three or four days and then I called my doctor's office and I set up an appointment and it was probably Wednesday so it was for the following Tuesday morning and I had a phone conversation with my doctor and he said Robin this is very very serious and I went oh and he said it's either um, a neurological issue or um, something to do with your um, with your with your eye. Like you need to see an ophthalmologist. So that was Tuesday. Wednesday morning, I was called by the ophthalmologist. I was in their office at eleven in the morning. He said to me, um, "Your rat, your retina's detached, and you have a tear, and this is very serious because there's a chance of blindness." So I didn't really, I went, ooh. And then the next, he said, I'm referring you to a retinal surgeon. So that was Wednesday, Thursday, I was at the retinal surgeon at noon. And within two hours, I had had laser surgery done on that eye. And I just went to the doctor to, um, 
it was last week. And um, he said, it looks really good, Robin. We'll just keep observing you and uh, come back in another month, but it looks good. So, again, how quickly I, I was taking, taking care of when it happened and how kind everyone has been to me. And, you know, again, so much gratitude for how how I just asked the universe to support me because I'm not one to go to doctors, but I knew something wasn't, wasn't right. And I, I needed um, a big lesson for me through all of this was sometimes you need medical, traditional medical um, help. You, you can't heal a bone. You need to have it <laughs> casted. You can't fix your eye. You sometimes need to have surgery, and I did. So it was a really big lesson for me on just seeing how traditional medicine can be complementary to me in my holistic field. Right. So those were my two experiences, all left side, everybody, all about the feminine, all about allowing. I I just had some very deep, deep lessons, all about slowing me down more because I already thought I went pretty slow. I'm about, I talk about slow living and just listening to your body and you have to get quiet. So I really got slow. <laughs> so I feel like I was initiated into um, some more um, expansive, like on my on my path to my own enlightenment and expansion. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a weird year. So I keep saying to people, COVID, COVID's here and I realize it's very very, very um, serious and affecting everybody, but I've had my own physical issues this year. So I'm quite ready for 2020 to be finished, <laughs> to move on, <laughs> to move into 2021, because so I'm going, whoa, I really got taken out this year physically. Yeah, but it so sounds like that's you, my you, learned, <laughs> uh, you learned a lot. Uh, uh, a couple of really valuable lessons that you needed to learn, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one, one of know. the reasons when, when, when I call you when I'm in, in, actually in trouble is like, it's like you, you bring, you bring the balance, but it sounded like you needed to learn some, ba- some, some lessons in balance. <laughs> you know, I realized that I was still, I was driving more with my masculine, right? Just sort of pushing instead of just letting things unfold. Mm-hmm. That was it, you know, and I always believed I was that, but I, it's gone to a far deeper level for me far deeper level and as we expand and we move through this consciousness and we move into this unity and and unconditional love and this five-dimensional consciousness that's that's the way we've got to go there right we can't push and shove and and try to figure it out logically we just have to trust and let it unfold and walk along this beautiful path and flow Mm -hmm. so very much you know i already i think it just grounded more into my psyche all of this through learning these lessons. Personally, I would have liked them to come a little gentler, <laughs> but <laughs> that wasn't my way <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> are you, are you, used, you used to, um, you, you remember the saying that what was it going to take for you to learn a two by four to hit you, to hit you over the head with a two by four? And yeah. it, somebody who once um, escalated that to, yeah, I, I, it, in order to teach Michael something, I need to hit him over the head with the entire house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could say that because people go a dog, but you know, I mean, the dog was just having a great time. He was, he was a big dog. He was probably a hundred pounds, and um, but he was just running. He didn't. I don't even think he saw me. He just pulled yeah. me right, right into me. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was one of those yeah. freaky, fluky, weird things that happens in life. Yeah. And the eye, I don't I don't know. I, I, I'm still sort of working through that one because I'm not sure I, about it I, yet. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about, about that one. There, there's probably another deeper meaning to that one. But to kind yeah. of describe you um, over the radio to everybody, um, you, you got to understand when you're talking about a 100-pound dog versus Robin... Robin is <laughs> five foot nothing, and she yep. weighs uh, maybe 
90 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> no, I'm more than that. Let's, you know, I'm, I'm quite a bit more than that, everybody, but Michael seems very kind. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm, I'm not very big. Yeah, she's <laughs> not, not big very person. big at all. <laughs> so, Right, um, right. It was, uh, anyway, that that's, yeah. um, and, and I just realized that, you know, I'm just so appreciative to the support and yeah. kindness that I was shown was immense. And and as my children, who are adults, um, they're younger adults, but but that it was very much a role reversal for them for them looking after their mom. So mm-hmm. I kept joking. Well, this is what it's going to be like when I'm um, when I'm when I'm um, you know in my late eighties and need help from you guys or nineties or whatever that is. So I'm glad to you know how it's going to be and how it's going to go down for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. It was, it was that was uh, that was a a very interesting time because I, um, I've I've grown used to to being. Um, being in touch with you, and of course, you kind of, kind of disappeared during that time. I went but, very quiet, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I realized I needed to just. Well, when you're wounded, I would think about what a, a, when an when an animal's wounded. It kind of it kind of closes off and just takes care of its um, of itself, and that's how I felt. And it was just mm-hmm. all about me just being quiet and self care and. Um, very, very quiet. I was, it was black and blue, you guys. I was a bit of, I was quite a mess, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you, you compared it to, cause, because, um, like every other thing in the animal kingdom, of course, human beings exist in the animal kingdom. Um, the wounded animal thing, um, I was going to say, say also that, um, while that wounded animal will, will tend to go off away from uh, from everything else and and heal, they also change their vibration. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it, since I know that you're also somebody that keeps very in touch with their with their body, um, did you experience the um, a vibration change? And then when you've come back, are you, are you still vibrating at the same place you were before the the uh, the dog accident? No, I think I'm. I, I went to a much deeper level for myself, and I teach. And I just want to share with everybody. I talk, you know, with everybody. I talk about energy because for me, it's all about energy. So, um, I definitely when I hurt myself, I. Well, I was in pain and sore, and I have—I did feel sorry for my. There was a lot of days of me feeling sorry for myself, and why did this happen to me? You know, I went through it all. We're human; we're having a human experience here, even though we're spirit. But um, now, I would say I'm very much—I'm really tapping into just letting things unfold. And I ask—I'm always asking the universe: Is this the right path? Give me signs. Show me the breadcrumbs so I can know. And I'm just being very directed. And, you know, I just should share with everybody my, I, I, I started a new business through this. But before that, I was focused more on end of life and grief and supporting people going through a very, very challenging time in their life. That seems to be where I focused. And when COVID came, as I was going forward, too, I was going, well, this is very life changing for everybody. We are grieving, mm-hmm. and there's different phases. We're grieving the way it was. We're, and you know, there's been a lot of people I've talked to that um, have lost loved ones through this because I do work a lot with seniors and families. And but I realized that there were so many people that were feeling high anxiety, and um, some people through the isolation were starting to feel depressed and they just were having trouble shaking this off. So then I started to, I was asked to teach some meditation and guide meditation classes. And I have, I do that with my clients, but I hadn't done that work for years. So it's like I did it years ago and then I, I came back into it and it's all been about, the meditations have all been about gratitude and getting in the body and love and, um, 
being open and are you grounded? Do you know what your field is? Are you watching that? Are you, are you letting, are you bringing your energy back to you? And are you, are you cutting cords with others so that their energy can go back to them? And that's really like, it's taken me more, a lot more into the etheric and the, the energy of, of, um, your vibration and, and ways to help and support people with tools and techniques and different things to help them support that. So it's been a, really, a, COVID's been a beautiful blessing for me to, um, how can I put it, to, as, as a, you know, this is a part of my business that I would talk about these things, but it's really helped me step more into that area. And people are resonating with it, and it's been beautiful. So... I'm really blessed. I feel very blessed. Yeah. And it's a good story, Michael. (laughs) It is is a very good story. Um, It's a good story. and I can laugh at myself. I really can laugh at myself in life, right? But the older we get, I kind of chuckle a lot of times with myself because I just go, you know, maybe I needed this story to be able to move into this, right? You can see how it all unfolds in your life when you look back. And I'm still learning the lessons of this and expanding, but um, it's it's really been a blessing. Mm-hmm. So it's that's the point where the wisdom of the of the experience starts to come in, and that you know you gain the wisdom and you can start to talk about it more that way. Yeah. And yeah. you, you're you're reminding me of another old saying: where, um, "What doesn't kill you makes you makes you stronger." It, the stronger yeah. is, is probably the, the the lesson that you learned, that you gained a whole bunch more knowledge, more uh, more wisdom there um, through the experience, right? And yes, I'm definitely like I'm a big lioness now. I've got a beautiful picture of a lion. Um, in my home and it's by my door, um, front door. And when I go in and out, I always look at it and I just remember it reminds me to be courageous, right? In my life and what I'm doing and to step out of the box and it's okay. And sometimes people are going to resonate with what I say and sometimes they won't. And it's all perfect. You know, I really realize that everything is perfect the way it is, how it's unfolding. We, I don't have to like every moment of it and either does anyone else, but it's really, um, the way it's unfolding is perfect in the moment, and I'm always going to be okay. I always say that to people. You may not like where you are right now, but are you okay in this moment? So really about this moment and really living in the present moment and being grateful for it. You know, we're so blessed to be Canadians. I don't know. I'm sure other people in the world, but it just really made me feel that way, that you yeah. can just walk into a hospital and get treated. Right, it was, yeah. that, that's a blessing that we have in in living here in in this country, for sure. Yeah. You know, now, now, you, you you say that, and um, in another one of our shows, we were actually discussing um, how it's uh, that that particular show is 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 an advocacy show for uh, for human rights and human rights for. Um, as as they get stepped on it, for people that have have various t- types of disabilities, right? Mm. And one of the things that we actually wound up discussing in in that is um, how rich we really are in um, in North America. We it, that this is the richest continent that, on the planet. In that. When you consider that even our homeless still manage to find three meals a day, they still manage to find clean water, and um, you know, in you look at other parts of the world where the I know. the most impoverished is you're you're seeing things like cholera and stuff like that, where you know. So we we you are know, very 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 rich and very very lucky to to be living in this part of the world. I I completely agree with you. You know when uh, you, I did um, I've been working with these six. I've been working with other groups, but specifically, I just want to talk about this. Um, it was a group that I was 
friend of mine reached out to me and they said, you know, we know you, I know you teach meditation or you used to in mindfulness. Um, would you be interested in talking to someone they want to set this up for their um, this dis- disability group? And I went, of course I would. Um, I thought about it for a moment. I thought, no, I, I'd like to do that. That would be just a different way for me to share. So it ended up that um, there were six different aspects of this group. Um, so it was all for people with disabilities and their family if they chose to. And... You know, that's another very vulnerable population, and I work also with seniors. So there's two vulnerable populations that I that I work with. And as I was just leading these groups and, and guiding these meditations, and, you know, it's meditation, but I do different things too. Like we do clearings and, like, um, lots. Of, I teach them a lot of tools beyond the just med- traditional what meditation, what people may be thinking about. But I would just said, to, I remember one day we were doing a session and it was on gratitude and it was just, you know, we can just go and turn a tap on and we have water and we can flush our toilet and sewage goes away. You know, I did a walk for um, Cares Canada last year and it was walking for to support girls who have to, they can't go to school because they've got to spend their whole day walking to get water and coming home and taking care of the family. You know, mm-hmm. we just don't, that's not even in my psyche, right? Because that's not my reality. We have so much here, and I, I've always said that to my kids. You know, you grew up, we grew up in a very abundant, abundant life here. Um, my kids all have higher educations, and I said, it's, it's your responsibility to give back now, and how are you going to do that in your life? Because we've been gifted so many blessings. And yeah. then part of that is how do we share share this with others so you know we we really you know people could say we won the jackpot living here because we we have that however there's with that we're very individualistic and sometimes we don't we're not as connected to community that you would be in um in we'll say third world countries you know the emerging the emerging nation so but um we have we have everything, I, you know, and that's the key to gratitude for me is it's not what we don't have and oh I wish I had this or I you know I want a new car or I want I you know I want I want to meet a man or I, I want a big house or you know all these things people could say they want but really when we're grateful for what we do have and it doesn't have to be big things. I have the most comfortable bed and when I get it in every night I am so grateful for this bed because it's so comfortable. And I just go, or, you know, grateful for my feet that I can walk, walk wherever I want to go. Because when I hurt myself, I wasn't walking very fast. I was sort of stumbling along or not for a while. And I just, it makes you go, wow, wow. And how grateful we are for all these things in our lives. And then, then the universe will bring us more things. Because, oh, the universe goes, oh, it's it, She's got it. She's grateful for this. Oh, I'll give her more. I'll bring more for her. Or right. him. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. Yeah. It, it's it, really um, quite simple when we figure it out. <laughs> it just <laughs> takes a while to get there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, you're, you're also one, one, of, one of my friends who did, um, it did, we're going to dive into a little bit of the mystical here uh, with, uh, with uh, manifesting but it really isn't so mystical when you consider that if you're grateful for what you have on the first thing, that the universe makes it easier for you to find the next thing that you want. Right, because if you're when you're awake, you're you're looking. Show me a sign. I always ask for signs. Mm-hmm. As I every morning, that's part of my. I do a gratitude practice every morning, and we. I do a meditation. I ground and I clear my chakras and rebalance myself, and just to start my day. That's my platform every morning, and then I, you know, I incorporate a lot of gratitude and affirmations throughout my day, and I check in throughout the day because I, you know, am I present? Am I in this moment? Am I giving that person the smile or just? Little things like opening the door for someone. All these things, just random acts of kindness. That that makes huge changes in your life because we're creating all the time. 
we just are you creating in the light or are you creating in the dark right it's one or the other there's no judgment either way because we are we are creator beings Mm -hmm. constantly so if i like to create in the light personally it makes it easier for me yeah but it's that's what um it's quite when you when you get it, it's really cool because it, then it becomes playful and it's it's like a game. Yeah, that's how I see it. <laughs> I can, I kind of get that one. That, um, <laughs> that it it is kind of kind of like a game. Yeah. So it is. It is like a, this place is going to be very interesting here. This planet Earth. <laughs> well, well, um, you know. It, you let's let's get back to being rich again okay um that we are lucky to be on this planet when you consider other planets that we could have appeared in that are crowded with with uh with with stars exploding or um Dust storms and things like that. Dust storms in space are very different than than what we think of a dust storm here on on planet Earth, um, because they can actually like blow away your entire universe. And if you and if you're a living being on 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 that, it's like poof, there it went. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we're pretty lucky to to be on on this on this particular planet that. Well, we and live in a very a beautiful... quiet neighborhood, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so With beautiful view. here. <laughs> <laughs> and how beautiful it is to live here! We see there's so much beauty everywhere, everywhere. You know, the sunrises, the sunsets, flowers, mountains, ocean, plants. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful you know i was chatting with a friend who's an astrologer this is years and years and years ago and he said to me robin um this earth is the graduate the graduate souls come to earth to do the work here because it's um it can be a tough planet because it's just there's so much beauty but we can have this abysmal darkness in it here too so it's how to balance those two and not get it like it's not good or bad it just is i'll use the example of temperature you know some Mm -hmm. people it's not hot or cold it just is it's temperature we're experiencing heat hot or we're experiencing cold i'm thinking of something else because i've been hearing a lot of people don't like the rain which is, I don't know why you live in Vancouver if you don't like the rain, because it rains a lot here. But um, we live in a rainforest, and it rains, so it's going to rain here. Yeah. But I was in California. This is probably 2008, 2009. I can't remember, but we were driving home from California, and on the sides of the highway, there was big, big signs saying, no water, no food. We need water. Um, preserve your water, treat the farmer better, like these signs all over, and I was looking, and, you know, the rivers were, there were no rivers, they had these sort of aquifer things beside the highway that would run under, and and there was, there wasn't much water in those, and I just remember coming home, like, as we were driving, and I just went, I'm never going to complain about the rain again, because we have water, and it's, green and it's clean here but I've never thought about it because if you don't have water you don't have food and yeah. we're seeing with the horrible fires that are happening down in I mean I think it's I think it's transmuting their energies down in California but that's you know the drought and the droughts the years of droughts and then the fires and you know they're they're you know we're lucky we're very blessed here yeah well um i'm gonna i'm gonna bring in one one of one of my hobbies because one okay. of my hobbies is 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 uh is astronomy and and, and uh astrophysics oh cool <laughs> yeah really cool hobby right okay so so there there's there's this thing right there's a lot of beauty in our universe but 
The more beautiful it is, also the more dangerous it can be. Mm -hmm. And that there are things that happen that um, just reclaim this or they change that. So when we look at, at the state of California, a hundred years ago, before, because we're going to go before the Hoover Dam, California was a desert. Right. And our planet tends to want to reclaim to bring back balance. And th this is w a lot of what, what we're seeing in the... Um, in California is they have you said they, I, I I know some of the celebrities I ran into some of the celebrities because they were they were they, they were stars in in Star Trek and things like that that um, they were talking about building these aquifers and running water from Alaska at, right. into into California because they wanted to, they they wanted to they did. They wanted to fight against the forces of nature to, um, to keep California what they had turned it into. But nature saying no, it's time to let that go, and we want it back the way it was. And well, man always thinks they can control everything, don't yeah. we? As we're seeing, we can control nature. We can do this, but. You now it's time to honor, honor our mama. I call her Mama Nature, Pacha mm -hmm. Mama. We, um, she gives us everything, and we haven't treated her well. So I think we're going to, we're getting a kick, kick in the pants now for that. When you were talking about coming back into balance, just as the human body, the body is always trying to come back into balance. Yes. It's mm -hmm. always trying to move back to that state of homeostasis. So that makes perfect sense that the earth is, it was it was a desert, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. Very cool. Yeah. So so th so we're seeing we're seeing a lot of the, of our planet w this year working. I, I would say it's it's like w I know we're focused on on uh, 2020 because of COVID, but um. 2020 wasn't isn't where this all started. It it, it, it was years before that that we were getting warning signs. That it's like, hey, you know, let's little taps on the shoulder. Let's um, let's bring back the bring back balance. Let's bring back um, uh, what what nature really wanted and. We're escalating towards uh, towards all this, right? Mm-hmm. Bring it. Mm -hmm. And as a species, do you think we're going to learn the lesson to 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 let Mother Nature and and um, and Mother Earth have have the will, or or are we going to keep fighting against it and and find eviction? <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, we, you know, if you believe it, we've been kicked off numerous times before. So I'm believing this time we're going to get it. and <laughs> We're going to be able to go forward because <laughs> Mama Nature can kick us off pretty quickly if she wants to. <laughs> so I think this whole, the COVID for us has been very gentle because we could have had hurricanes and tsunamis and it could have been a lot more physically upheaval. The upheaval from the earth could have been far more than it's been. And it mm -hmm. may still, things may happen. But I believe that if we don't get the lesson and work and, and live with respect with nature, that we will we'll be kicked off again. We will. We'll be kicked off. That's part of what I also teach people is how to help them reconnect with nature because we are disconnected from nature often i'll take a client and we'll just we'll be walking through the woods and that's where we have our session we may sit by a river and talk and just just and i tap into just let's look at the energy of water what is the element of water how does that work in our bodies how does that how can we 
watch that. I was just actually did a little post on that today. How can we watch water and see? It teaches us about flow. How can we be more flowing, flowing in our lives? Yeah. I love nature. It teaches us so much. It's it's my I'd say um, nature is my master teacher. Yeah. Um, someone uh, said uh, described their business uh, using water as an example that their their water wasn't uh, uh, that their business wasn't a laser. Their business was a river, mm. and they said. While the laser, like it, it goes straight to work really fast, in but eventually, um, in the long term effects, the laser dies out. The river kept going, and look at what the river has has carved out for us. In I know <laughs> we have the, the Grand Canyon, we have the Black Canyons. We, uh, I mean, our, the entire Canadian landscape was carved out by um, an ocean receding. Yes. You know, the Arctic you can Ocean can walk receded. Through, <laughs> I know, can walk through Cap Canyon and it's just beautiful the way it's yeah. carved out there. I just wanted to share with everybody, I love to walk Cap Canyon, so there's a reservoir at the top of Cap Canyon, mm -hmm. and I'm always watching it, because when it rains, it fills up, but it is, it's, I've been walking there for years, and what I'm noticing is how quickly it goes down now. So people, um, mm. we're using a lot of water in um, the city now, far more than we used to, as more and more people come to live in the city, so just for people just we have so much and i think we can forget how much we have and that just just respect it yeah. respect respect that we have this abundance of water and food and everything here we really live in a beautiful place so i, I call it pan's land it's just magical here i feel very very blessed to live in live in the city live in the west coast of canada yeah well we're starting to run out of time. Oh, my God. So oh, are we? Okay. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I could talk to you for hours, Michael. We yeah. get in the vortex, right? Yeah, there's I no know. Time. I know. There's, there's, there's a Robin and Michael vortex, and we'll just fall into <laughs> I it. I love it. And, and, and well, so, thank you very much. So, Sorry? Um, one last question, though. Okay. And, um, do you have any, have any advice for people as they're uh, because it's actually going to air air in twenty twenty one? We're pre recording in in December, but this is actually going to air in twenty twenty one, so everybody knows what, when they're listening. Do you have any advice for people as they start off on on their life's trek for twenty twenty one? I just think just. Like when I'm feeling, what I'm feeling as we're talking is just take a big exhale and just center back into yourself because this is what do you want in your life? This this has been a big year for people to go. Am I happy with what I'm doing? If you're not, let go. Because the more we struggle and try to stay in situations, the more pain we will feel and the more we will suffer. So, and believe me, I've been really good at that in my life, too. <laughs> but, you know, if you, are you happy, are you happy um, doing what you're doing in that relationship? Are you happy with your health? Are you happy with your relationship? Are you happy with your work? It's a really good time to sort of evaluate that. And if not, be courageous. It's, it's, it's. The energies are here that will support us now to make these shifts in our lives. Mm -hmm. So that's what my, my, I would encourage people to look at and do that this year. Just, just be honest with what you are desiring for yourself, not what you think you need to be doing or being or saying or or you know everything just be honest with yourself and live your truth next year you know we're in the energy of five it's all about freedom mm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Freedom. It will be interesting. Yes. It will be. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Michael, for having me. I'm always love to share, and I love our chat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you for listening, everybody, and we uh, will talk to you again later on. Um, and um, do make sure that you, that you listen to the whole entire Gratitude Series. There's five of them. Make sure that you listen to all the coaches because there's, they may all be saying something very similar, but only one may say the thing that you need to hear to move forward in your life. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everybody. So, Bye. Okay. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.